All right, how's it going? So in this video, I'm gonna be covering how to alter the display of decimal field values within Django. Um, so use cases for this could be quite broad, but in this case, I'm gonna be covering dollar formatting. So let's say you're writing a certain financial application. Um, so there might actually be a need to store data in decimal fields with a granularity above two decimal places. So even though you actually need the decimal field to store however many decimal places in the database and on the back end, um, what's going to end up happening is you're going to be stuck serving the values to the front end exactly as they're stored with the redundant zeros in this case um, that you might actually want to clean up. So there are certain band-aid solutions um, such as um, correcting it after the fields are rendered on the front end with JavaScript or by using template tags in a certain way. Um, but this is actually going to be a fully modular solution done entirely on the back end. Uh, meaning it's basically going to work on all of your forms and model forms regardless of how they're rendered. So how we're going to be achieving this is by writing our own custom Django widget. Um, so in case you didn't know, a widget is Django's representation of an HTML input element. Um, so basically a widget is bound to each form field and it's going to be used for generating the underlying HTML that is going to be sent to the front end for rendering. Um, also, it's important to note that widgets are used in all forms all of the time, regardless um, whether or not you actually define one. Um, and then if you don't define one explicitly, what's going to happen is the default widget for the respective form field is going to be used. Um, so if you go ahead here and take a look at the widget class, um, this is just going to be a quick example of the text input widget, and I'll go over the different types of widgets in a bit. Um, but as you can see, for the text input widget, basically each widget is going to be responsible for generating the underlying HTML. Um, and then all we're going to be doing here is just subclassing our own widget. Now, depending on the use case, it might actually be possible to achieve the same end results using something in views.py or forms.py. Um, but using a widget, as we're going to see later, is going to be the most direct and the most modular solution. Um, so now, if we want to look at um, some of the default widgets to see how those work, um, in the documentation for model fields, um, let's go ahead and look at decimal fields, since that's what we're going to be using. Um, and as we can see here for decimal fields, um, there's actually two default widgets. There's going to be a numbered input and a text input, depending on localized. And all of this we're going to look into later. Um, but basically, because those two widgets are the two default widgets, um, that's what we're going to be working with when we go ahead and subclass our own. All right, so before I actually go ahead and start writing our widget, I'm just going to show how the widget is actually going to integrate with your form. Um, because the widget is going to be applied to individual form fields within a form, and there's a slightly diff different way of integrating the widget with your form fields depending on whether you're dealing with a regular form or a model form. So I'm going to go, um, go ahead and show those cases now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and import forms. This is just inside of our forms.py. And then for the model form, we're just going to go ahead and import whatever model you're going to be working with. In my case, it's just going to be trade, but this is going to be whatever you're going to be using. Um, so I'm going to show the model form case first. So we're just going to go ahead and write a simple model form, um, which is a subclass of forms.modelForm. Um, and then inside this is just going to be everything you're normally going to do. So of course, in a model form, you're going to need a meta class. And inside of your meta class, you're going to need to define whatever, whatever model you're going to be working with and whatever else, such as fields you want to include or exclude, whatever else you need. Um, the important part is the widgets in a model form is just going to be a simple class variable called widgets, which is just going to be a dictionary. And instead of, inside of this dictionary, um, it's basically just going to be key value pairs, where the key is going to be the underlying field name in the model, and then the value is just going to be the actual widget. Um, so for example, if you were to have a char field defined called char field inside of your model, right, since it's the model form, you're going to go ahead and just do the name. And then for the value, you're going to directly add the widget. So the widget in this case for a char field is going to be a text input. And then you can read further documentation for how you actually want to deal with your widget. We're going to be subclassing our own. Um, but for example, one thing that you're likely going to want is the attributes, which is just going to be underlying HTML attributes, where you can go ahead and, for example, give it a class. And then if you're using Bootstrap, you might want to give it a form control class, which is useful. You can go ahead and give it whatever HTML or CSS attributes you want. Um, but that's all it's going to be. And then in our case, if we have, for example, a decimal field defined in our model, we're going to go ahead and do the name of the decimal field. And then, of course, as we know, this is could either be a text input or a number input. I'll, I'll still explain that later. Um, we're probably actually going to end up subclassing the number input widget. And then same thing, you can go ahead here. And this is actually the widget itself. 
Um, and that's just how you apply the widget inside the widgets dictionary inside of a model form. And then if you now want this to be applied to a decimal field inside of a regular form, it's going to be slightly different. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a regular form, which subclasses from just forms.form. Um, and then inside of a regular form, you just have form fields that are explicitly defined inside of your form. You're not inheriting from a model or anything. And then forms.decimal field. This is just an example decimal field where this is actually not a widget yet. This is just your regular form field. And then within your form field, you can go ahead and define your max length or the number of decimals or whatever else. Um, and then one optional parameter inside of a regular form field is going to be the widget, singular now. It's only on a per field basis in this case. Um, it's just going to be the widget argument. And then you can go ahead and then it's going to be the same thing from here on out where you can go ahead and do a text input or a number input or, what, or whatever else you want. And then same thing, you can go ahead and give it attributes, for example, right? Class as form control or whatever else you want. Um, but that's just gonna be the model form case and the regular form case. And these right here are the actual widgets. And what we're gonna do now is basically subclass a widget to get the intended behavior we want. Um, so we can actually format our decimal field values on the front end. So where you actually wanna define your widget is up to you. Um, but in my case, I would recommend just adhering to regular Django conventions. So I'm just gonna go into my app directory and just create a widgets.py. Um, so this is where the magic is going to happen. This is where we're actually going to do the heavy lifting and create this widget. Um, so for imports, we're just going to go ahead and from Django import forms. Forms is the module, not just where form related things live, but also the actual widgets themselves. And then because we are dealing with the decimal field, we're going to need to also import um, the actual Python decimal class, which is lives in decimal. So from decimal import the class decimal. Um, this should be good for imports. Now we can go ahead and actually define the actual widget. Um, so again, you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call mine dollar display number input, and it's up to you. And as I mentioned before, when you're dealing with a decimal field, there's going to be two different default widgets are going to be um, could be in use depending on localize. Um, it's up to you if you are using localize. Um, the default though is to not use localize, and when you're not using localize, the default widget is going to be a number input. Um, the difference is just going to be the type of HTML input element that is rendered. A number input only accepts numbers, and it has two little arrows to increment and decrement the number. And if you're on mobile, it's only going to give you a numpad as opposed to a regular keyboard. Um, so they are interchangeable. You can use either one. The end result's going to be the same. But in this case, I'm just going to stick to a number input. So we're going to go ahead, and we're actually going to inherit from forms.numberInput. But again, text input would be completely fine depending on your use case. Um, and what we're gonna go ahead and do now, this part for what we're doing in this video is not actually necessary. So these two lines you could skip, um, but it could be good practice just in case you need it later to just define the init method, just in case you do need to do anything in init. Though these two lines you could skip for this and it would be okay. But if you ever do want to create your own initialization method while subclassing, you just go ahead and def your init, and then it's going to take in self, star args, and double star keyword args, um, just as you normally do. And then of course, to still get the behavior of the parent init, you're just gonna go ahead and call super dot double underscore init double underscore, and then just hand it your star args and double score keyword args. Um, this isn't actually doing anything. As I said, it could just be considered good practice to keep it in there just for future flexibility, but you could go ahead and skip it. Um, the actual method that's going to matter is going to be called format value. So it's going to be um, format underscore value. And this method, format underscore value, lives inside of number input and text input in pretty much every single widget. Um, and we're actually going to be overwriting the format value method in the number widget so we can actually format the value exactly as we want it to be on the front end. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, of course it's a class, it's gonna accept itself, and it's going to accept a value where this value is going to be the exact value that gets pulled out of database, right? Or that a user puts in depending on when this is actually being ran. Um, so now we can actually get started. So how are we going to actually strip off trailing zeros up to two decimal places, right? Because that's what we actually want to do. So if you think about it, um, there's going to be a couple of steps, right? So the first thing, we're just going to go ahead and ask a question, right? 
So is the value not none, right? So it's just an if statement, and then if the value is not none, right? Because if the value is none, there can be certain corner cases where a field is actually allowed to be submitted empty, and when a field is submitted empty, you don't want to touch it, right? Um, so we're just going to make sure that the value actually exists and is not none. And there's going to be another case for this. We need to make sure that the value actually is a decimal type, right? So this entire if is just going to be a gate to move on to the actual formatting. Um, so we need to make sure is instance value decimal. And what this is saying is, is the value a part, is the value basically of a decimal type? Um, because there could be a certain case, for example, depending on how you have your model set up, where even though we are dealing with um, a number input being applied to a decimal field, the decimal field defaults to a string, could be a valid string that you can use when you call the decimal constructor. But in this case, if it's being submitted with the default value that is a string, it might not be a decimal. And because of the default, you might not have any need to deal with it. Um, so essentially, this whole thing is just a safeguard. You want to make sure you're dealing with the decimal, and you want to make sure that the value actually exists. So once you pass the safeguard, and you know you're dealing with a value that you actually intend on formatting, so I'll just go ahead and give this a simple comment just to keep us on track, um, because under here is where, where we're actually going to strip the trailing zeros, leaving a minimum of two decimal places, right? So this is where we're actually going to do the heavy lifting. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to do a while loop, and we're going to keep on checking if we need to remove the rightmost digit. If we do, we're going to remove it. If we don't, we're not. And when we get to the end of the loop, we can just stop and return the value of the cell we're actually going to be doing. So we're going to go ahead, and there's going to be two cases. So we're just going to keep on looking at the rightmost digit, right? And then what we need to ask, basically, is do we need to remove this digit, right? Um, because we need to remove it if it's a zero and if we are indeed more than two decimal places out. So there's gonna be two different cases here. Um, so the first case is we just need to make sure that we actually are dealing with something starting at decimal place three or greater, right? So we're gonna go ahead and inside of an ABS, an absolute, I'll get to that later, is we're gonna go ahead and take our value and we're going to do as tuple, right? Now the value, as we know, is um, a decimal right? And as tuple is just a method, a native method in Python that can be called on decimals, that's just going to return three different stats or metrics um, about the decimal. Um, it's just a method, right? So we're going to call it. Um, and then one of those three is something called exponent, right? So value is our decimal. As tuple is just going to return a tuple, um, or there's actually going to be three different named things in this. Um, and then one of those three different named things is dot exponent. Um, and what exponent does is basically just tells you how many decimal places are in that decimal, right? And we want to go ahead and do something if there are more than two, right? So we're just going to go ahead and make sure that that's greater than two. And then basically just for semantic reasons, it's actually returned as a negative, which is why we just nested it um, inside of an absolute function, right? So all this is saying is while the number of decimal places is actually greater than two, right, which is three and more, because if there's under two, it doesn't matter if it's a zero, we don't want to remove it anyways. Um, and we're actually going to have another function um, where this is just going to be another value dot as tuple. Um, but in this case, we're going to index into digits. And digits basically just gives you a list of every single individual digit inside of that, um, inside of the decimal, right? And it's a list, we can use square bracket notation and go ahead and index into negative one, um, which is just gonna be the very last digit, right? The rightmost digit. So what we have so far is if um, there are more than two decimal places in this, now we're gonna look at the digits. And if the rightmost digit is equal to a zero, then we know something needs to be done, right? So if we're dealing with a zero, three or more out, essentially what do we want to do to that zero? We essentially want to get rid of it, right? Because that's what we're actually trying to drop is those trailing zeros. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new value, right? We're essentially just going to overwrite it. Um, and we are going to call the decimal constructor. We're essentially going to create a new decimal, which is going to be the exact same thing minus that single trailing zero, 
right? And the decimal constructor just takes in some valid string or float or something. It's actually not recommended to use floats. In this case, we're going to use a string to construct a new decimal instance. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that this ends up being a string. And what we're actually going to hand just the string function is going to be the value, right? So all of this now is the value represented as a string. Um, and then after the value is a string, we can now go ahead and use square bracket notation and use the colon operator, which is just the split or slicing operator inside of a Python string and split from nothing, right? Which just means from the start of the string to negative one, right? And this is just inclusive, exclusive. So we include everything and we go up to the very last one and we exclude that, right? So all we're doing essentially here is just dropping it, um, dropping that trailing zero of course, it's a string anyways for us to drop it, and the decimal constructor accepts a string. So what we're doing is just dropping that trailing zero, right? And that's all we need to do. This while loop, this while loop is going to run however many times. If the rightmost digit is a zero, it's going to keep on dropping, 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 up until we hit something that's not a zero, in which case the loop will terminate, or we hit two decimal places, in which case the loop will also terminate. And when we're done with the loop, right, outside the loop, we're going to go ahead and return the new value, which is now the value that we overwrote some number of times, not the actual initial value that was handed to the method. Um, and at this point, we're actually done, right? So we have a number input subclassed. It's going to have all the regular functions that the regular widget has, um, except it's a new one called dollar display number input. And the format value, you don't need to call this yourself. This is actually a built-in function by default in all widgets, it's going to be automatically called by Django whenever um, any HTML actually needs to be generated from the widget to be served and rendered on the front end. So you actually don't need to do anything in your views or anywhere else. This is actually now done. You can just apply this in whatever model form or form you want, and the actual formatting is going to be taken care for you. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to save this and copy the name, whatever you called it, and head back to forms. And all we're going to do now is first of all, we just need to import it. So we're just going to do from um, dot widgets, which is just the new file that we created. And we are going to import the actual name of the widget. And now on any applicable decimal fields that we want this to happen, we're just going to start using our widget instead of the existing widget, right? So if you have a decimal field in your model form where you previously used forms.number input, we can now get rid of that and use dollar display number input. And whatever you want to hand to it, you can still go ahead and hand certain attributes to it, right? It doesn't really matter. It's still going to work in the exact same way. Um, and then same thing for a regular form. If you want to use this in a regular form, rather than forms.decimal field, you can go ahead and get rid of that and hand it dollar display number input. And I'll show the final results. Um, and at this point, everything should be taken care of for you. You don't need to write any JavaScript. You don't need to render your forms in your template engine any differently. Um, and you should have the intended results served inside of your forms on your front end. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any questions at all, just let me know in the comments and I'll definitely get back to you.